Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, Glenn Ward, How to Shoot a Basketball. Uh, this episode's power generation. Uh, it's 2.0 in the office. If you watched my earlier video, um, it was about lock and load, which is getting the ball online. So this is now how we get enough power into the ball to get the ball to the hoop. Um, power generation basketball, modern basketball is very interesting. It's very complicated. Uh, we have to get our shot plus or minus about 50 mil. So long or short, that's that's sort of the limit we have. Getting the ball online is relatively easy. Now power generation is the tricky part. There's two forces in the power generation. Uh, there's a vertical force. Uh, that's an e that's the easy force. I can get the ball 14, 15 feet in the air, no problem at all. The t difficult force is the horizontal force. Uh, so if you picture vertical force, horizontal force, this is the force that we really have to generate a lot of. Think of sports where you generate a lot of horizontal force, baseball pitchers, javelin throwers, shot putters, tennis serve. Um, they can run, they can stride, they can get a lot of rotational stuff going on. We have to still do that, but in a very controlled way. So, here's what we do. You take the head, this is the head, center of body mass to the ground. Modern basketball player, catch the ball, dips. When he dips, his head comes slightly forward. Remember, most shots, most shots are missed short. Lock and load, I've got the ball online. I don't want to miss my shot short. So things that help, dip, head comes forward. My feet are still a little bit behind. When I jump, my feet land in front of me. Now this produces small forward force because we can't produce too much forward force, otherwise we're moving our eyes closer to the target, changing the actual distance to the target every nanosecond. Floaters, runners, you can do that, they're in close, uh, but real outside shooting, and outside shooting is what we're talking about. Um, it's, you've got to control your head movement. So you want to control the, the distance to the hoop, or know the distance to the hoop. So our feet land forward. Looking at from above, this is my head, my two eyes, my shoulders come across. Again, remember, shots miss short. Bring your shoulder a little bit forward, put it in the same plane as your eyes. This also puts more center of mass behind the shot. Good for recoil. Recoil is a disaster for any shooting system. Um, gun manufacturers, tanks, battleships, go great lengths to control recoil. Right? So this is how we control recoil. Traditionally, we control recoil by being very rigid and just trying to make a wall to push, to push off. Modern shot, we flow through. So looking from above, head, eyes, when I shoot, my shoulders should come forward a little bit. You have to be careful how far you bring it forward because obviously it's going to affect your accuracy and obviously if you come too far forward your arm's going to get in, in the way of your shot. The way you know you're doing this right is when you start your shot. Those are my size 12s, my feet behind my head, my feet are behind my head. When I finish my shot, my feet will be in front and on a twist. Now, I don't try and do this, I don't try and make my feet twist. This should happen naturally as a result from your shoulder movement. Things that happen in the upper body affect what the lower body does. So don't try and do this twisting jump and expect that to produce the forward momentum. The forward momentum produces the foot movement. Um, it's called sweep and sway. Um, remember, we don't have to generate tremendous amount of speed. Baseball pitcher can throw a ball 100 miles an hour. To shoot a three-point shot, we only need about 20 miles an hour. All right. it's a big difference. It's a big difference in force. Now there's two types of shot. All right. I'll talk about this again tomorrow. Um, there's the one-piece shot. One-piece shot is where the ball starts low and goes continuous and doesn't stop all the way to the release point. Uh, that's a Seth Curry modern outside long-distance shot. You'll see sweep and sway and all this sort of stuff. More traditional two-piece shot, the ball physically stops above the head. You can still incorporate these principles into it, right? but power generation is not so important because generally two-piece shot, two-piece shooter, Kobe in his prime, they're more inside. Uh, it's more of a handgun 
as opposed to one piece shot being a rifle. So you think of Kobe as a gunslinger. If he was in the bar, a couple of handguns, everyone's dead. Right? Kobe gets in the key, everyone's dead. Right? The interesting thing about guys like Kobe and uh, say Jordan, guys who have 40 inch vertical jumps, is that even for them, as soon as they leave the ground, they're starting to decelerate. The maximum force that they can put into that shot is actually when they first leave the ground. Right? When they get to the top of their jump, there's no vertical force coming out of your legs. People talk about power coming out of the legs. You look at the one-piece shooters, Seth Curry, he's actually still going up when he, really, when he releases his ball. This is one of the reasons his release is so quick, is because he's not releasing at the very top of his jump. He's actually taking the power from the jump, that upward momentum, and still using it to put power into a shot. So coordination on one-piece shots is very difficult. I'll try and show it to you. I was never a one-piece shooter. I'm not the best model. Uh, so we'll get back on the court and see you tomorrow. Bye.